So, but tell me, around about 17, uh, your life uh, took a bit of an unexpected trajectory when you witnessed uh, something happen to your family sausage dog. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that was crazy, man. So, anyway, I, um, you're at, I was 17. So, basically, you're, in, you're at that phase of where you know, you have to decide what are you going to do for the rest of your life? <laughs> That's just the way it works, isn't it? And, <laughs> yeah. So um, we'd laughed about this with one of our other guests, but um, marine biology was always one of the things on the cards, especially <laughs> living at the beach. Um, and uh, I wasn't really sure. I did love biology. I had always loved animals and what have you. So um, anyway, Jackie, our little sausage dog, was a little overweight and uh, as they get sometimes and her back started to like get sore and she would, she would, her ears would be hanging and her arch would, uh, sorry, her back would be arched and she would just be visibly in pain. And uh, it was just horrible to witness. And we took her to the vet, right? Uh, as one does. And the vet says, you know, I don't know what to do here. We can't sort this. There's not much we can do. Why don't you see the chiropractor? And we were both like, what? That's crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't even really know what a chiropractor was at this stage. So um, my mother had seen a chiropractor and, and, and you know, loved this guy to bits. She'd help, he'd helped her a lot. And um, so we phoned the guy up, Robin Dugmore is his name. And, he's, and uh, he says, you know, a spine's a spine, nervous system's a nervous system. Bring the dog in, please. Uh, after, you know, after all my patients are gone, I'll, I'll just have a look for you. So we bring the dog in. Long story short, by this stage, Jackie was basically dragging her back legs. They weren't functioning properly because of the, you know, because of the, the pressure on the nerves from the, this bad back injury. And so anyway, he had her over the knee and he did this and that and did his thing. And basically, she walked out where she had basically dragged her legs in. And I saw this in front of my eyes and I was like, good Lord, you know, what just happened? You know, this is incredible. Wow. So that was, I was obviously in an quite impressionable at that stage and it blew me away and so he gave me a book to read um which just blew my mind as well about chiropractic uh and I, and then i just spent a few a bit of time with him looking at what he did and uh, i was just i just loved it i was just like is this really your job you know this is great um so i i said mom you know this is it i'm moving to Joburg next year um, because my sister lived there to study chiropractic and that was the sort of that beginning of that uh, whole trajectory, actually. Yeah. Wow, man. That's so cool. That is such a cool way to get into what you ultimately end up doing. Hey, and <laughs> yeah. maybe let's, let's just uh, talk a little bit about uh, Robin a little bit. Yeah. I to mention our Robin Dugmore. Um, it, you, you basically had one of your proudest moments uh, with him. And maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was quite a proud moment. So anyway, Robin was the one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Genuinely, like just Eastern Cape guy, as uh, just salt of the earth. Uh, I, I literally I've never met someone as nice as him. So uh, and anyway, that was just a pretext to to the story. But he um, so he'd got me into chiropractic, and not long after that incident, he was actually diagnosed with a brain tumor, which was devastating, and. Uh, anyway, I went off to uni in Johannesburg, did my thing there. And I went and I always made a point of when I went back home, I'd try and visit him just to say hi. And I was in sixth year. I was just basically, I think I just finished or just before I'd finished, uh, studying. I, uh, um, I went to visit him and at this stage he was so ill with the brain tumor that he, he was very weak. And so he actually could only see two people a day, um, mm. which is not, is nothing, but he still kept doing it. Like he, even though he was so, he was like, I can only see two. And then he's, then he would be broken. He'd have to go lie down. Right. Mm. But he wanted to still do what he loved. Right. And that was super inspiring in and of itself. But anyway, I, I went to see him. Um, he's very weak. He was on the couch. He, and, he, and I said, you know, I just want to tell you, like, I'm finished my studies now. Um, and uh, I just want to, you know, spend some time to say thank you and how much you've mean, meant to me, blah, blah, blah. And 
yeah, I always get a little bit emotional just thinking about it. So um, anyway, he's like, great, while you're here, please won't you just check my spine, you know? And um, so I'm like, oh my God, this, I was nervous, you know, this is full circle time, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I got to, I got to adjust him and, and uh, you know, he gave me a hug and he's like, this is great. And yeah, that was the, the last time I got to see him. So it's quite sad. Yeah. Um, Flip, man. That's touching, bud. Yeah. That's really touching. Yeah. And um, yeah, well done for, for keeping in touch with a guy like that, you know, because it says a lot about you as a person, but it says, it just says so much about you, you know, and that's the, that's the Craig I flip the no, you know what I mean? He, he cares deeply about people and, yeah, and that's right. testament to, you know, to who you are. Like this, this started at such a young age, you know, so flipping really Thanks. touching story, man. Thanks for sharing Thanks that. Sure. But, yeah, um, one of the people that's also had a huge influence in your life, as well as I guess I started the podcast was your grandfather. So mm. tell me a little bit about your relationship with him and you know, who he was and why <laughs> you sort of cherished him so much. Cool. And yeah, it's a cool question. Um, yeah, I know like certainly you, you've told me a story about your grandfather and I, I can't wait to hear more. Um, and I had a good relationship. I actually lived, we actually lived next door to my grandparents for a long time, um, which is a great, uh, well, for me as a youngster, it was great. Um, my grandmother, uh, Granny uh, Doreen was her name. Uh, she was just this quintessential um, granny. I don't know, like flipping amazing at like crossword puzzles. Uh, she was like this trivial pursuit genius. And she would make these amazing tapestries, with one which is hanging in my house right now. Um, and cooked like a machine, like just the yummiest stuff. And so, so she was like that, that woman, you know, and just loving, like just this most loving person. And I have real fond memories of her um, and, and just these great conversations we'd have. Um, and she'd always be caring. And, and, and it's great to think of actually now. So I'm just, you know, just think of having those feelings um, come back is nice, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and my grandfather was this epic guy, man. He, he was just like this ultimate storyteller um and uh he was he was mischievous and uh had the sense of humor as well um like crazy but in a sort of a dry way so for example the one day <laughs> uh the one day he um he used to tease my grandmother like he'd, he'd say like all the time like where's my tea doreen oh i'm not you know i can't handle it because they'd have tea and you know how it goes and back in the day so anyway one <laughs> so one day he's flipping um he actually because he was a tinkerer as i mentioned he was always busy with stuff so he fell off the ladder and he's probably i don't know how old he was maybe flipping um 80 or so he fell off the ladder right um painting the the gutters and he crawls in to the kitchen uh, <laughs> on on all fours <laughs> and my, my my grandmother looks at him and says Yes, 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 Ken. I'll make your tea now. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, he had actually fallen, but anyway, it was uh, classic. And you know, that was the kind of thing he would do, you know. Um, but epic guy. So we, we, he was like, he would take me fishing. Like that was my thing, man. I used to love going with him fishing, and we'd go and stand in his backyard, and he'd teach me how to like. We'd cast with just a sinker on, and we'd just you know cast the sinker in the backyard um he he was um he was in the second world war he's in north africa and he used to, he could speak um and i've just forgotten the the language um, that he that he learned um, but he could speak quite a lot of it um one of the north african languages swahili there. or something like swahili that. that's right so yeah. yes swahili and um so he um he actually used to teach people how to drive the, the vehicles and stuff, the army vehicles and all that. So we, all the grandchildren flip and you learn to drive really young wow. um, in the backyard because he was just like, you got to learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Then, yeah, so, so we'd go fishing and, and we'd come back and then grand would make like a, um, this amazing, we'd catch whatever we'd caught. We'd, she would make this battered fish for us and we'd sit there together just, you know, like the three of us and, uh, um, and then after the lunch or whatever, we had, he would have a, a moment. We, we have to learn how to waltz. So he taught all of us grandkids how to waltz. So, and uh, he always used to sing um, 
and people listening should listen to the song. Go Google it. It's called Tennessee Waltz. And um, it's a great song, actually. Uh, and I still, like, if I think of my grandfather, he, uh, I think of that song always, you know, because he would always hum, he would hum or sing that song, like, you know, we'd be walking through the, the house or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs>